Hey, it's me, Lyric. Welcome back to Bounty and Soul's Plant Powered Kitchen. Today, we're going to talk about drying foods, the process of dehydrating foods, removing the water and moisture content, and therefore preserving it. People have used drying as a way to preserve food and medicine for over 14,000 years. So we know a lot about it. It's easy, it's simple to do, it's really fun, and there's all sorts of benefits. For one, it's a great way to reduce food waste. If you have a bunch of one type of food and you don't think you can eat it all fresh, drying could work really well and allow you to eat that food later on and not have to eat it all right now and prevent it from being thrown away. This is really useful, especially if you come to the Bounty and Soul markets where sometimes you may get a case of peppers and you're like, what do I do with all these peppers? You could dry them. Another pro for drying food is that it retains the nutritional quality of the food. So drying at low temperatures, like under 200 degrees, um, is still considered raw food. So that means you haven't reached a certain temperature that's gonna start to cook off specific nutrients. All you're removing is the water. Everything else in the food is intact. My favorite reason for drying foods is to honor and enjoy seasonal foods um, when they're out of season, specifically summertime foods in the winter. Lastly, it's just a great way to ensure that you have foods or medicine that you need on hand when you need them. This is specifically pertinent to herbs or herbal medicine. You can kind of stock them up over time and dry them and then you already have them on hand when you need them. Kind of like building your own medicine cabinet or uh, what's called an apothecary. And just to quickly touch on the other methods you can choose from for preserving your foods, you can always ferment foods. Um, we have a, a video about sauerkraut up on the website and the Facebook. You can freeze foods. We just had a beautiful uh, volunteer video about freezing basil. And you can can foods using uh, mason jars. Okay, so I think you're as excited as me and you wanna dry your own food, but how do you do it? There's three main ways. My preferred method is using a food dehydrator. My dehydrator looks like this. So this is a separate appliance from anything else that I own that's specifically for drying food or herbs. It has a dial on the top um, so I can choose all the different temperatures and it tells me exactly what temperature is best for what type of food I wanna dry. And then it opens up in the front and it has nine total trays. I have some of them out right now, but there's nine total trays so you can fit a lot in here. You can see I'm dehydrating some cherries right now. But this is just my personal preference. This is an upfront investment. It costs money to buy a dehydrator, but it can really help you with food safety. I've never had anything get moldy or rotten when using my food dehydrator. It makes things a little bit simpler. So you can always consider buying a dehydrator if you get really into drying foods, but there's other easier ways to start. So with herbs like um, leaves and stems and flowers, um, you can just hang them. So this was a bundle of lavender flowers and you can bundle it into small bundles so you're still getting a lot of airflow. This is a really tight, dense bundle. Um, and you wanna hang this in a well-ventilated area um, out of direct sunlight. That's a really common mistake that folks can make when they're hang drying herbs. You don't wanna put it in direct sunlight. The sun is just gonna bake this herb. It's gonna make all of the volatile oils evaporate and just be fried, and it's gonna lose all of its color. Color is a great way to kind of test and note the integrity and the quality of the herbs that you've dried. Like over here, I have some herbs. This is lemon balm that's been hung. This is a room that has a ceiling fan constantly going, and you can see it's still totally green. Um, and it's not yellow or brown or, uh, you know, dead looking. It's dry. You can hear that it's dry and crispy, but it still has that beautiful green color. And that's what you're looking for. So if you choose to hang dry your herbs, you can just check on them periodically and kind of crunch up some of the leaves with your fingers. And if they feel and sound really brittle, like that lemon balm, they're probably ready to go. You don't need to wait um, and you shouldn't wait until they look brown or dead. This method won't work with really juicy, fleshy things like fruit. That's something that I always dry in my dehydrator. Um, these are some dried cherries that I dried in my dehydrator because there's so much moisture in something like fruit that it'll just rot if you leave it out. But you can dehydrate mushrooms without a dehydrator, certain mushrooms um, that have a low moisture content like something like reishi. And you actually do wanna dry your mushrooms in the sun, which is 
very different than the herbs, but mushrooms actually absorb extra vitamin D from the sunlight if you leave them in the sun. So if you slice off your mushrooms thin, you know, that's, that's probably about a half inch thick, but you know, even a quarter inch thick, and you lay them out on a cookie sheet um, in a sunny window or outside on a sunny day or in your car on your dashboard, that's a place that uh, traps a lot of heat, you can dry your mushrooms that way. Likewise, with herbs in your car, you can use the paper bag method. Um, and so that is when you, you take your fresh herbs, you put them in a paper bag, and this is gonna pull out some of that excess moisture. Paper is uh, automatically a fairly drying way to store things. Um, and you can uh, kind of close up this paper bag and put it on your dashboard in your car, and that's gonna be a really hot, dry place, um, but you're protecting those herbs from that direct sunlight, which is what you don't want. So we have the dehydrator method, hanging or air drying, and then you can also dry foods in your oven. This can be fairly tricky. I don't personally have a lot of experience with this because I do have a dehydrator, but you can set your oven to the lowest temperature, even being warm, the warm setting, and slice up um, things like fruits, like apples, you know, around a quarter inch thick, spread them out on a cookie sheet and allow them to kind of bake dry in the oven for, you know, it could take eight to 10 hours. You could also set the oven on a slightly higher temperature like 225 or 250. Um, but at that point, you really would technically just be baking the food, not so much drying it. So those foods would not be able to store as long as herbs that are dried in a dehydrator or via the air. But you can definitely experiment with drying foods in your oven. You can check out, there's lots of recipes online for different specific foods, how to cut them, how long they may take, um, but just be aware that you will have to have your oven running for a potentially long time. So plan it for a day that you're home. After you dry your foods or herbs, you wanna store them in an airtight container. Probably a jar um, is gonna work best for long-term storage. Foods like these uh, that are properly dried, they're fully dried, there's no moisture being introduced after the drying process, they're in an airtight container, they will last for several years. You know, the quality, the color, the flavor, the nutritional, you know, medicinal benefits, those may deteriorate over time, but as long as there's no visible mold in your jar, it's fully safe to eat. And then you can call on these foods whenever you need them. You can create more products with them. Like I have, um, I had dried some blueberries, some local blueberries that I picked up at Altum Farms. We had some of their blueberries that went out at our market. I dried the blueberries and then I ground them into a powder. Now I'm actually gonna add this to frosting on my birthday cake and it's gonna make the frosting a really beautiful purple color. It's a cool creative way to, instead of buying artificial food coloring or something like that, to just use uh, foods and medicine that are growing right here where we live. Some whole jalapenos that I dried, these came from my garden, I had too many, so I dried them whole and then I can just throw them whole into a soup or a stock that I'm making and then strain it out um, before I serve the food. So I'm infusing that, um, jalapeno spice and all of the benefits of capsaicin and uh, spicy foods. That's really easy and simple. Of course, you can dry herbs and things for teas. I have some nettle that grew on my property, um, which is highly medicinal for teas. Um, flowers, you can dry flowers. I have some uh, red and crimson clover flowers from the property, some calendula flowers from my garden. Look at that. Look how beautiful. What a jar of sunshine uh, I've been able to encapsulate that I can open up all winter and remember what it's like to see calendula flowers in July. Dried foods can also just be great for snacking. Like I, I mentioned these dried cherries, I've dried watermelon, peaches, grapes, of course, those are just raisins when they're dried. You can dry culinary herbs. This is parsley from my garden. All right, y'all, so this was my tour of dried foods uh, in my home. I would love to hear what foods you have tried drying or are curious about drying. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Drying foods is one of my main preservation methods that I use for the food that I grow and gather. So I hope this video was helpful and feel free to reach out with any questions. Happy drying.